What they've done, especially under the Obama administration, is turn that into a criminal act. So if you expose wrongdoing and it's disclosed to the press or ends up in the press, then you are a criminal. It doesn't matter if the government did wrong. You, you did wrong in exposing the wrong. And any number of whistleblowers now have paid very, very high prices. I'm extraordinarily fortunate. I didn't end, didn't end up in prison, but my life was you know, inalterably you know, turned inside out. I mean, it was, I say, forever changed. You know, a career that I had was gone, um, ended, up, ended up bankrupt, essentially broken, and unemployable, at least within the government or the contracting. Anywhere in the national security or intelligence arena, I was off limits, you know, persona non grata. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> the whole system is corrupt, is what it's saying. Uh, we are not a country of laws, we're a country of selective laws and selectively applied laws. That's the, that's the real problem. We used to have a moral standing, I think, in the world with a value system that uh, we used to hold. And after 9-11 and, and Dick Cheney and the dark side and all, we don't have any moral standing anymore. I mean, we've lost everything. I mean, No different than what happened to me, where, oh, of course, I was a national security threat. I was targeted as an enemy of the state. So they literally took the equivalent of a, of a virtual electron microscope and just drilled down and looked at every single database, all records that existed to find out what there was a, to know about me. They needed to know everything there was to know about me so they could profile me, profile me. Who am I? Who? Are, what are my associations? And then, you know, based on that, you know, assign a threat, a threat index. You know, a threat index as to, you know, how much attention do we need to pay to this? In my case, they paid a lot of attention. I felt. I mean, here I am. I said, I'm living the 21st century version, okay, of the Stasi. I have agents of the government who are questioning my entire life and any and all associations because I've been declared an enemy of the state, and they're all implicated as well. I mean, if you, can, if you can get knowledge and information about everybody, then you have leverage over everybody. And that gives you the power over them. I mean, if you can't, it's just like the KGB did. If you can't influence somebody directly and you don't have, they, they, don't, uh, they don't have something that you can leverage against them directly, you can find somebody that they, can, they, they are concerned about or care about and, and use that and find something on them and use leverage that way against them. John Kiriakou ended up in prison. Now, why was he hidden up in prison? Well, he was facing many, many years, as I did, but he had very young children. It was better to spend 30 months in prison, it was two years and then house arrest, and now he's on probation, than it was to risk all that for 8, 10, 15 years. Now, the reason he ended up being fingered by the government is because, guess what he blew the whistle on? Torture program. I mean, we put the, the people who expose names of people who do torturing at CIA get put in jail and the torturers get retroactive immunity. I mean, what kind of, uh, what kind of society would do that? I mean, it's, uh, <clears throat> that's just, uh, and the, or, or you go after whistleblowers instead of going after the corruption, fraud, waste, and abuse in, and, in, in the entire government to straighten it out. That's an entire corrupt government. We're the only two people. What does that tell you? All those in the state who gave orders, who authorized surveillance, authorized torture, actually engaged in torture, managed the torture program, all of them have immunity. We're not just talking one. We're talking dozens and dozens and hundreds, even thousands of people are ultimately implicated by both surveillance as well as torture. Now, what does that say about the power of the state? I mean, remember, Ellsberg himself, he's 84 years old, okay? Ellsberg himself was declared the most dangerous man in America, Henry Kissinger. They tried to take him out. There was actually a plan to assassinate him. That's how far the Nixon administration was willing to go if they could get away with it. I had people fearing for my life, right? They were afraid that I would end up in prison. I mean, I would be incarcerated. They just you know, yanked me off the street, right? They were f fearful about that. And it's not just us. 
we spread this around the world. The UK is doing it now. The, the Germans are doing it. I mean, other countries are also doing it. It'll come out later. We spread this malignancy, this metastasized malignancy, right across the the world to to basically infect all the democracies of the world. 